Hello everyone, I'm Alifia from Energy Investment Management and I'm here today with the winner of Southeast Asian Energy Innovation Challenge from Solcast. Well, Solcast is um, Solcast provides solar data, also forecast services that can be accessed in one minute. But basically, I think it is better for us to know from the CTO himself, Dr. Nick Engerer. Hello, it's nice to meet you today. How Hello. are you? Yeah, I'm doing very well, enjoying the event very much. Well, okay, so as I said before in the introduction, I think it's better to know Solcast itself from you. So what is it actually? So Solcast is, we refer to ourselves as a solar data services mm -hmm. company at the highest level. Our specialty is in solar now casting. And uh -huh. uh, what that means is short-term forecasting yeah. of the near-term availability of solar irradiance yeah. or the power output from solar facilities, big and small. Yeah. And the, the fun part about that challenge is it's actually a weather forecasting problem. Yeah. And our team watches the cloud cover all around the world using five different weather satellites to see how cloud cover conditions are changing every few minutes. Yeah checking it all the time we're watching the cloud so nobody else has to mm -hmm. and that has really big implications for being able to manage electricity grids yeah. that have a large amount of solar in them right. just like we're seeing here in Southeast Asia how do you describe uh, the difference with other weather forecasts with Solcast itself yeah so we are obsessed with clouds that's obsessed the thing clouds. so weather mm -hmm. forecasting in general needs to think about rainfall temperatures, wind speeds, uh -huh. the things you want to know about what outfit you're going to wear for the day mm -hmm. uh, or what, how an event outside might fare. We are very focused on cloud cover. So we are looking specifically at how much sunlight is making it through the clouds, what types of clouds are present, what heights they are in the atmosphere, which direction they're moving, how much light is going to make it through each level of cloud. Uh, the time of day, tracking things, even as interesting as solar eclipses, and making sure we have a really clear picture right. of the solar irradiance, right. which is the fuel for solar plants. Right. So large-scale solar plants, the amount of energy they're going to generate on a given day right. or in the next few minutes, it all depends on the thickness of the local clouds, mm -hmm. the sunlight. So mm -hmm. that's our specialty. So why do you think that um, knowing about the clouds, especially cloud covers, will help the solar sector, solar industries? Well, there's, there's great examples of mm -hmm. what happens when you don't have that information, yeah. right? So in, in Vietnam, we've had incredible amounts of solar being installed, mm -hmm. uh, but they've had to stop installing it because of issues in the electrical yeah. network and in the electrical market. And part of the solution to keep solar mm -hmm. installations going mm -hmm. is to have a high quality solar now casting solution. Yeah. Because what it allows a grid operator to see from within their control room is how much solar is available right now, how much will be available in five minutes, mm -hmm. in an hour, uh, in two hours, tomorrow. And that's really important in a place like yeah. Southeast Asia, particularly because it's so, so impacted by the monsoon. Mm -hmm. And during monsoon season, we tend to see sunny mornings, plenty of solar available, but very suddenly the afternoon convection, the afternoon storms start. And sure enough, the solar power output will ramp down very, very quickly. Uh, I was sharing in a presentation just an hour ago yeah. uh, from the island of Taiwan, where mm -hmm. we see the power output from all the solar on the island ramp downward by two gigawatts in just about an hour or so from large scale storms all across yeah. the island. So you have to have that type of information in right. your control room. And that's why you need a solar now casting solution from a provider like Solcast so that solar can keep being a part of the energy mix. Right. I think that will be very revolutionary for the Southeast Asian re region, especially we have um, different climate and there are also climate changes. I think that will be really great. Well, I heard that Solcast, you have like around approximately 30,000 users worldwide where um, adding to that so what do you think is the most interesting findings from during all your operations yeah the there's so much to learn yeah. and it's really fun to see how our customers mm -hmm. are using our data and that, yeah that number you're quoting I think it's 35,000 users that mm -hmm. have signed up to test and play around with our data some of those are researchers some of those are people with their own home solar system yeah. um, but many of those are commercial prospects and we have over 200 customers now and that is who we pay the most attention mm -hmm. to in terms of where's the value yeah. in this data. And I think we could point to a few big ones uh, here in Asia. I mentioned the island of Taiwan, so right. Thai Power is the grid operator there. We're providing solar now casting to mm -hmm. them so that they have 
operational visibility right. and see what the contribution from rooftop and large scale solar will be across the island and in different parts of the network, in, in particular encountering the challenges with the monsoon. Um, we're also a provider of uh, 29,000 different points of solar irradiance data around South Korea to KEPCO. And they use that in their load forecast mm -hmm. to know what's the difference between the expected load and the actual load. Because as you get lots of rooftop solar installed in your market, you see a change in the apparent demand because some of the demand is being met by rooftop solar. So being able to model that and see the impact of that on something as big as an entire region of a country like South Korea really shows the value of having solar forecasts for a grid operator like them. And of mm -hmm. course, there's many individual solar farms that need forecasts as well, particularly in markets like Australia, where a solar farm participates in an energy market. And they need to provide an instantaneous power forecast mm -hmm. five minutes ahead. Yeah. That's a real big challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's one that our team has risen to and done quite well with. And I think that that's been a tremendous place of learning because it shows what's possible when an energy market starts to open up and allow solar farms to produce their own forecasts to participate in the energy market. It improves the outcome for everyone. And I think that that's one of the things we've been sharing here at this conference with other countries is that, hey, this is a really cool way to do things. And we learned that from our customers. Uh -huh. Well, you're doing really great, but what I'm curious is about, what are your plans for Southeast Asia and what is Solcast's plan in the few years ahead? Well, there's going to be 80 gigawatts of solar going mm -hmm. in uh, to Southeast Asia by the right. end of this decade. Mm -hmm. And that is against the backdrop of tremendous amounts of solar going in all around the world. And in fact, when I talk to my team and try to pump them up about what we're doing, I call this the, the decade of solar. Uh, the 2020 to 2030 decade. And it's, it's absolutely pivotal that we get this right. And with the um, introduction of solar forecasting into the solution space, it enables new things that weren't possible before. And so we, we get very excited thinking about what will, where our technology will go, um, particularly in the Southeast Asia market, in helping to build what we call the solar powered future. Right. Because if you don't have good, high quality solar forecasting mm -hmm. data, uh, good historical solar data for network planning, we start to see solar being stopped uh, in terms yeah. of being in, able to install more. So Vietnam is not installing any more solar in 2022. They've stopped it, both wind and solar, because it went so fast and so many new problems came in, into, into being. And so what we look forward to is being a part of the solution that keeps solar installations rolling ahead. And we see tremendous opportunities here in Thailand, um, Malaysia, Indonesia, the Philippines, and Vietnam for those technologies because uh, those countries that I just mentioned there are the majority of that 80 gigawatts yeah. of new solar going in by 2030. So being a part of the decade of solar, that's incredible. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Well, that's the end of our conversation today. It's really nice talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for your time. So fun to be here at Enlit Asia, and we look forward to being involved You're in welcome. future events. You're welcome. It's lovely to have you today. Thank you. Thank you.